This is Dr. Fujan, and this is the Ask Me segment. I have gotten this um, question from um, someone who answered me on uh, my LinkedIn. And uh, the question is, how do I handle my emotional numbness? It's really uncomfortable. And I feel so away from everybody. And sometimes it's scary. I'm sure it is. It is um, awkward when we feel that numbness. Sometimes the numbness shows up because it's a reaction to something like a reaction to a medication that you're experiencing. But overall, when we're just looking at the emotional numbness, it could be a signs of anxiety, depression, or post-traumatic stress. Um, for someone who has been um, has been traumatized before and they continue to have it. So when it's about anxiety, sometimes we become really numb because we're uh, feeling so much anxiety that our system kind of shuts it down in order for us to be able to um, kind of exist and survive that moment. So it becomes, um, it will go shutting down. I've even had people who've experienced kind of depersonalization as if they're you know, like leaving their body or they have a tingling feeling. Um, in your in their tingling sensation, but not really a feeling. Um, there are other uh, people who do to a lot of depression. Um, there's this chronic constant uh, sadness and after the sadness they'll go into a numbness and sometimes when the intensity of the emotion is so high for us in our body our system has a shutdown valve which says i can't i can't handle all this intensity so i'm just going to disconnect from it um, in order not to be overwhelmed by it. And if we've done that too long, well, because maybe we were in a living in a family that had too much in type of um, uh, emotions that were consistently part of the everyday living. Um, I've worked with children, for example, who lived with families and parents who were constantly fighting and there was abuse um in yelling and screaming and domestic violence and you see many of these children at one point or just they just go numb because they can't handle it they disconnect completely from all that's happening even the sound of um you know what's going on in the other rooms uh, to be able to survive this space and because of this they might have just kind of like held that into their system all the way to um you know their adulthood where they shut down their own emotion, they shut down their anger, they shut down their sadness, as if emotions are dangerous. So if the association with emotions has been, um, I can't handle it, I'm overwhelmed, I'll die from it, um, it's too much for me, uh, then the system shuts down and then we'll continue to be shutting down if we've never learned how to manage and handle emotions. Many people go through this until something really, another disastrous um, episode happens in their life and then it just bursts. Um, and then they can't handle that kind of like the wall that's been holding it, the dam that has been holding it. The bad news is that when you numb yourself that way, uh, because you don't want to experience the negative ones, you also shut down and numb all the positive feelings that you really want to experience, such as happiness, joy, and all of those. So um, people stop feeling connectedness. They don't feel the love and the intensity of love that shows up. And they sometimes get scared when the intensity shows up. If someone falls in love with them or you have a little puppy or a little baby which comes in front of them and just explores and explodes with all of this amazing emotion, they get scared and they move back because they have no no idea how to handle that. So what do we do with this type of emotional numbness? If you've been traumatized before and you experience this type of emotional numbness due to trauma, I really request from you to seek psychotherapy and learn step by step in how to contain, name and contain the emotion, plus to heal the past and, and be able to, um, you know, release yourself from the hold of the trauma that's been there and all the meanings that you've given and uh, you've had to suffer through. Um, if that's not the case and you're finding yourself being in a space of um, whether it was um, a practice that you did or by accident you felt numb and then it kind of stayed. It's more of learning how to notice your emotions. So 
the first way of noticing emotions and feelings is to be in your body. Many people have kind of depersonalized and dissociated from their body again because of the intense emotion. So the point is, how do we get back to our body? Do you notice like when you go into cold water, you put your toes in and then you bring it out and then you put the rest of your feet in and then you bring it out and then go you slowly but surely until your whole body is in the white, is in the um, cold uh, pool. It's kind of the same thing we do with emotions. So what you want to do is to start being in your body and feeling the sensations. So practice with me if you can. Start experiencing um, your breathing and the way that you uh, smell um, is it, it, when you breathe in, what type of a smell does it have and the type of a, um, temperature the air has as it goes into your nostrils. And then as you breathe out, experience um, the air coming through your mouth and taste what type of a taste does your mouth have. And then kinesthetic, what kind of a temperature do you feel around you? What do you see? What kind of a light you see around you? What kind of sound do you hear? I hear my dog barking right now. What other sounds do you hear around you in your own vicinity? And you can see that you can come back into your body and experience the body. Now watch your thoughts. And also go into your system and the, your body and see what kind of emotions and feelings you're experiencing. Start learning how to name those emotions, whether it is sadness or anxiety or joyous or calm or whatever it is that it shows up. And begin naming it and recognizing those again for yourself. If it's hard for you to recognize emotions, one of the things you could do is start looking at different types of movies or different types of music, which um, it's they're all designed to provoke emotions in you. So as you're watching the movie and uh, start feeling your body and the sensations that are happening and see what type of emotions are showing up for you. Because the more you practice with the day-to-day -day experiences of small intensities of emotions, then you can get used to sitting with your emotion and delving into more intense ones. If you need support and you are afraid of experiencing your emotion because you think, if I'm right on the edge of the well of the sadness or depression or rage, and if I ever go in there, there's no way that I can come out and it's going to be destructive, seek help. Get a therapist so that you could work with your emotion and slowly but surely learning how to stay in your body, feel the emotion, name the emotion, and then release the emotion if it's unwanted and feel it and contain it and experience it if it's something that's pleasurable that you want to keep it. Every emotion has um, some sort of a uh, um, message for you. So you also want to know what the thought process is beside the emotion for you and what it is that is sharing with you. And if you need to do anything about it or just remember it and enjoy it. Other people that I've noticed are becoming a little bit depersonalized and lack of emotions also are people who are using drugs. Sometimes a drug invokes um, type of a depersonalization. So if that's also what you're doing, my suggestion is try um, you know, to, to get off of it and see what experiences your body will have again, experiencing your true emotions and feelings. I hope that was helpful.